Okay, I have used a non-destructive overlay layer to dodge and burn different areas of my creature. I've mostly burned it. Are there any areas I can lighten it and dodge it still? Maybe a little bit along this back ridge. I'm thinking of these spines as kind of absorbing light. But again, it's really easy to overdo this. So be mindful of that. Let's see. Yeah, I think that helps. Okay, so what to do now? Well, now I've, I've adjusted the colors. I've adjusted the lighting direction. There are little things I could probably still improve. Like this shadow got a little harsh with my levels. So I could go in and directly change my creature's uh, highlights and deep shadows by selecting in a fairly non-destructive way, selecting the parts of the creature like this, just roughly with the lasso and internally compositing it. So I'm on my creature layer. Now I'm going to duplicate. So I have an aspect of my creature that's separate from the rest. And now it's safe for me to dodge and burn directly onto that. Right. And I can then because it's not an overlay layer, I can then do something like dodge shadows and brighten them up. Then I can go in with my eraser and kind of clean it up. Because it's hard to use those dodge and burn tools with really, really precise accuracy. So sometimes you just have to make a new layer for them. And you can always dodge right onto your creature itself, but and dodge and burn onto it, but you run the risk of, of losing out on things you might want later from it. So that's why I recommend using the overlay layer. Another reason you might want to play with that, let's say I wanted this hand to be behind the iceberg and this hand to be in front of the iceberg. Well, what I can do is take this hand and this arm on my creature layer and I can duplicate it and then internally composite it. I can grow it. But not only that, I can move it in front of the foreground layer, like that. Let's warp it a little bit. Right click, warp, so that it covers up the old one. I don't have to do the extra step of erasing the old one, because I'm lazy. I don't want to lose that option. And that way it can actually be like clawing at this glacier because my story is that it's going to be looking for food within little algae within these kind of glacier forms. So the benefits of internal compositing, and it helps that arm stand out a little bit as well. Okay, what else can I do? Now I'm thinking of, okay, this creature is now more believably in this environment 
but everything looks so sharp and in focused. And this creature is pretty darn big. You know, it's like a, a dinosaur in its size. And so I want there to be a, a sense of the air, of the atmosphere that's here. So I'm going to save my work as a new name. So save as, and I've saved it as Proving Ground Number One Creaturescape. And now I'm going to go back to compositing, and I'm going to go to Pixabay, and I'm going to search for frozen mist. This might be too specific, but I want something that just gives me cloudy atmosphere. Remember, I don't want eye stock. I don't want the ones that are advertised. I want to log in. I just use my Google, and that will give me access to the largest resolution images. Remember, it's free. And that also gives you the option to contribute to Pixabay if you so choose. And you know what I want? I want something that's like a snowstorm. I don't want trees. I don't want mountains. I want something kind of like this. The snowy mist in the morning. So let's look up snowstorm. Oh, this is good, this kind of atmosphere, even though there's mountains in there. I don't want it to look too digital because that's what we're doing. But we're basically looking at this kind of atmosphere and how we can add that in. Well, you know, it'd be really dramatic I mean, I almost always look for like fog and clouds because those work really well for for what are called texture overlays. This is quite dramatic, the snow and the trees. But I'm trying to be fast here. So on the first page, I saw one that was like mountains near the bottom. Here we go with mist. So this has some really dramatic contrast in it. I'll start by showing you how this might work. So I'm going to download the largest image. Even though with texture overlays, you can get away with slightly lower resolutions because you're going to be softening them anyway. This is just showing the atmosphere in the air. Then I'm going to go to my downloads. And I'm going to just drag that image right onto the very top layer of my composite. Shouldn't take that long. <laughs> there it is. Then, like I'm rolling out cookie dough, I'm just going to stretch it. I'm going to hold down shift so I can distort it across my image. where I think it's going to be most useful. I can even skew it or distort. So really stretching it. It's why it's good to start with pretty high resolution. OK, then the basic idea of a texture fill is you just take the op opacity way down, and then that texture overlaps. And you can kind of see those wind gusts, but they're too sharp. So we're going to use the only filter that we will typically use in this class, because filters are algorithms written by the programmers of Adobe, and they kind of build in their own artistic choices. But this is a filter that's incredibly useful, and it's just called Gaussian Blur. So you go to Filter, and you go to Blur, and you go to Gaussian Blur. And this is that easy way to take focus away. And in an ideal world, we would rasterize this first so it doesn't do it as a smart effect. So I should have done that. And now, because I didn't do that, it's going to take a while for Gaussian Blur to affect it. But you basically set your radius. So let me cancel this. Let me rasterize. And let me crop again the image so I'm not saving all of those extra pixels I don't need. And now let's go to Filter, Gaussian Blur, Under Blur. 
And there are lots of types of blur, but almost all of them rely on some sort of artistic interpretation, except for Gaussian blur, which just softens the given pixels. Okay, so I Gaussian blur it. Then I'm going to take it down to about 20% opacity. And you'll see that atmosphere now in the image. And then I can play with, I'm going to get off the crop tool because those shapes aren't on. Then I can play with adjustments like levels, and I'm going to limit the shadows. And I can brighten the, the atmosphere of the highlights if I wanted to. I'm just going to push it and optimize the histogram, but limit the shadows. So now it looks like this, right? Because texture overlays are usually variations on middle gray. And you can even try just putting it at a pretty high opacity and see if that works. And that does kind of work for this. And then I just like to use a large eraser really large eraser at zero hardness, and I just start erasing away at a low opacity. So parts I want revealed. A little bit more revealed in the foreground. And you see how that that's the atmosphere in front of my creature. It can take down its overall opacity. Now it's about 30%. Now let's build some actual snowstorm. Let's download this and do the same thing. These are called texture fills. If you just Google texture fill, snow, in a Google image search, you'll get a lot of results too, because designers like to offer these up for people. They're used in film, they're used in, in uh, photo editing, but if you get them off of Pixabay, you don't have to pay for them and they're good quality and you won't have watermarks, right? Go to downloads, take that blizzard, put it on top of everything, rasterize it, then stretch it with Command T, holding down Shift so you can distort its proportions if you want. Make sure you cover the whole surface though. You don't want any weird hard edges. We're working at pretty big resolutions. Then I'm going to crop the image again, so I, I cut off all those extra edges, so it doesn't have to remember those. Come on. And then I'm going to go to Blur, Gaussian Blur. This one's already a little blurry, so I'm not going to need to do it quite so much. But I want to get rid of those hard contrasted edges. Then I might want to go to adjustments and levels because this has a little bit of color content to it. So I want to be careful of that. And I'm going to brighten the midtones and limit the shadows. And now I'm just going to take the opacity down. And you can see it just makes it look like it's on textured paper. And you can see a little bit of a tree up here, right over the sun. So I don't want that. So what I can try is not having it on normal mode, but trying it on something like overlay mode, right? Like we did for our, our non-destructive layer. Or soft light is one I often use. See what difference that makes. Or pin light is another one I often use. And that will show kind of the strongest textures. 
So I like how Pinlight looks there, and then I'm going to erase out where I don't want it as much. 